Graduation season is here, but many young Americans are planning to go right back to campus. That's right. <laughs> Do not pass go. More than 3 million adults are expected to enroll in a graduate program this year. That is according to the National Center for Education Statistics. But some experts say the pros of getting a master's degree do not outweigh the cons. James Murphy joins us now. He's a senior policy analyst at Education Reform Now. James, great to have you with us. You know, uh, you wrote an article in Business Insider that calls a master's degree the biggest scam in higher education. Those are fighting words there, James. Uh, explain what you mean by that. Well, um, lots of college students hear this line all the time now that a master's is the new bachelor's degree. Um, and there's, there's certainly some truth to that. As you just mentioned, 3 million people go, are now enrolled in master's degree programs. The number of master's degrees that have been awarded has almost doubled since 2020. Um, and the reason people go makes sense. They go to get a good job and make more money, right? This is, you know, you might go to college and get an undergrad degree to become more enlightened and, you know, a, a well-rounded person, but master's degrees tend to be very sort of practical. You go to make more money, you go to get a better job. And that's true in many fields. Uh, that's true in, in engineering. That's true in nursing programs. So a lot of like STEM kind of science degrees actually do have that payoff. But there's new research showing that around 40% of master's programs have no positive return. Um, meaning, if you take in the cost of attending and the time spent not working, uh, you essentially the, what you get out of that master's degree doesn't even pay for itself. Ooh. There are many programs that actually have a negative return on investment, meaning you may end up making less money by getting this degree. Um, so that's pretty bad, but, but it actually gets worse. Um, and this is where the scam level really comes in. So around 60% of students who get master's degrees will take out loans to do so. Um, they borrow twice as much as people do for undergrad. Um, and so they end up getting a job that does not pay that much and they're saddled with all this debt. And the reason they can do this is because the federal government lets them do that. So the federal government places almost no caps on how much you can borrow, uh, which is different for undergrads. You can borrow in the neighborhood of about $30,000. So you might get a degree that costs you $70,000. You've now got $70,000 in debt for a job that earns you about 50 grand. Um, mm. Who's really benefiting from this? It's the universities who are seeing this giant pile of money out there and grabbing it. Um, in the past decade, around, I think it's what, 9,000 uh, new master's degree programs have been created. Now have 9,000 new fields been created, 9,000 new careers been created? No. Um, this is essentially universities seeing the money that's out there and getting it. Mr. James Murphy, you are very convincing. Yeah. Uh, so what would your advice be then to a wayward 22 or 32 or 42 year old, doesn't like their current <laughs> job, is thinking about making a change, considering a master's degree as the next step? Yeah, and that, that's a great question because the reality is that, like I said, people are going to get master's degrees to make more money. And, and who does this more often than not? It's more often women than men. And it's more often people of color than the white people because they're trying to overcome a wage gap. Um, so what's my advice? Um, I think the first thing you want to ask yourself is why you're going to get a master's degree. If your answer is to make more money and get a better job, and that's your only answer, it's probably not a great idea. Um, if you're going to acquire skills, that will actually lead to a better job, or you're going to get a credential that will lead that you're guaranteed to pay you more. So like lots of public schools will uh, pay teachers more if they get a master's in education, right? So if you know you're gonna get that return, then it makes sense. So point one is to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Point two is, and this is, you know, all students should do this, do your homework. Um, so uh, you should look at a site like the College Scorecard, which the federal government runs, or the research that's cited in, in, in the piece that I published, uh, to see how much debt can you expect to graduate with? What kind of job can you graduate with? And if you're thinking about a particular master's program, call them and say, hey, what skills am I going to learn? If they just tell you like, oh, well, you'll get a great network and you'll learn you know, communication skills, walk away. Um, <laughs> find out what actually you'll be able to do in a year or two years that you can't do now. Got to take a cold, hard look at that master's degree. Right? That is trenchant analysis. Yeah. I really appreciate it. It mm -hmm. is a breath of spearminty fresh air. Yeah, it really. is. And honestly, thank you very much. James Murphy, appreciate it.